you can make this data visualization with just two lines of Python code. Keep watching and I'll show you how. Hi, this is Jay and welcome to Python in Office. In this channel, we explore ways to use Python programming language to make our office jobs and lives easier. This chart is made using a Python library called Plotly, a powerful charting library that can make interactive graphs and web applications. I'm going to show you how simple it is to use Plotly to make beautiful and interactive data visualizations. And you will see why I think this is a real tableau killer. The backbone of Plotly is the Plotly.js, a JavaScript charting library. We're using the Plotly.py, which is the Python version of it. When we use Plotly, the Python code we write will call functions in Plotly.js, which will then generate the chart. So JavaScript is the real reason our charts are so beautiful. However, we don't need to know any JavaScript to use Plotly. Everything can be done in Python. For this tutorial, we'll be using a coding environment called Jupyter Notebook. If you need help with preparing Jupyter Notebook, check out my other video on how to install it. Let's first pip install Plotly and IPy widgets. The Plotly library has three main tools. Plotly Express is good for data exploration, super easy and quick to use. In terms of learning curve, this is the easiest. You can make a chart with two lines of code. Second. We have the regular Plotly, which allows for full customization of the chart, and it's good for making polished charts used for presentation purposes. This is also not too hard to learn. Once we understand the Plotly data structure, using the regular Plotly also becomes intuitive. Last but not least, Dash is a framework for building interactive web and data applications. I rank this the hardest in terms of learning curve is because with Dash, we have full control of the chart components and event handling features that allows us to make interactive applications. So naturally, there are more things to learn. It doesn't mean this is extremely difficult. It's just the hardest compared to the other two. For this tutorial, we just need Plotly Express. So let's import that. Note it's Plotly dot Express, and we'll name it as PX. We'll use the famous Gapminder dataset that contains historical GDP and life expectancy information for many countries in the world. We can take a look at the dataset by entering DF into Jupyter Notebook. Life expectancy is how long do people live on average for that country. Op is the country's population. GDP per capita is a way to measure how wealthy a country is. But now let's just remember that we need two key data attributes to make a chart. The first is the dataset the information we want to visualize. Second is the layout of the chart. With Plotly, we define the chart declaratively, meaning that we just need to describe what we want to be shown on the chart without worrying about how to actually code and render them. Let's dive into the dataset and check what we got. Let's take the continent column from the dataset. The unique method shows the data contains countries from five continents. We can also use the same way to see what countries are available. Just replace continent with country. And by checking out the length of the list, we see there are 142 countries in total. Let's draw a simple line chart to show the life expectancy for the North America countries. So we got a list here that contains Canada, Mexico, and United States. The is in pandas method is used to filter the dataset to keep only the three countries in our list. Here in the px.line method, we pass in the data first, then we declare the chart layout. We want the year to appear on the X axis, and life expectancy to appear on the Y axis. We also want different colors for different countries so that we can spot them easier. Run the code, we get a pretty neat line chart. Hover your mouse over the chart, we'll see relevant information for each data point. We can also draw a little bit more complicated charts like a box plot. The box plot essentially shows data distribution, maximum, minimum, average and the 25 and 75 percentile values. We can also see outliers. For example, this outlier from Asia is Afghanistan and this other one in Americas is Heidi. We can also make a violin plot if that's your cup of tea. It's kind of similar to a box plot that can show the data distribution. Let's try to make another popular chart type, the histogram. PX dot histogram. We're going to show the data only for the year 2007. X axis the life expectancy and y axis the GDP per capita. We're going to look at the average GDP, so histofunk equals to average. Let's run the code. The histogram shows, but it's kind of cluttered. It's probably nice to show each continent separately to see things easier. So we can do that by adding an argument. That's it, column equal to continent. This chart shows us that higher life expectancy is associated with higher wealth. Well, I guess that's very true. Now let's use all the data points to draw a scatter plot. X axis is the GDP 
GDP and Y axis, the life expectancy. We also use different colors for each continent. Okay, we got a bunch of dots, kind of a useless chart. We can give the data more clarity by passing a few additional arguments into the plot function. Size of the dot will depend on the country's population, and we set the max size to be 100. The dot for country with the largest population, which is China, will have a size of 100, and all the other dots will scale accordingly. We see that all the points are kind of cluttered towards the left-hand side of x-axis. A way to stretch the chart a little bit so we can see the dots better is by taking the log of x axis value. So we set log x to true. Then we fix the y axis range to be between 20 and 90 years old. Let's draw again. Now it gets interesting. We see different bubble sizes. The largest blue bubble there is probably China. The largest purple one is probably United States. Also we kind of see some pattern forming. The bubbles seem to follow a trend line to the upper right corner. Now the chart is still super crowded because we plotted the data from all years onto one chart. How about we try to show data for only one year at a time and see how the life expectancy for each country evolves over time. So we can essentially add a third dimension to the chart which is time by adding one more argument animation frame equal to year. Let's run the code again. So this chart shows how GDP per capita and life expectancy for 142 countries change over the past 50 years. A picture is worth a thousand words is quite true in this case. If you think this stuff is awesome, why not subscribe for more content like this and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future video updates. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.